This is me. This is my beloved wife, Sylvia. This is Sylvia's idea of sailing. This is my dream of sailing and my hope of circumnavigating the globe as a retirement project in 2029. This is Sylvia's reaction to that idea. I am on a six-year quest to convince Sylvia that a circumnavigation is a wonderful adventure, but the clock is ticking, so join me as I search for the perfect yacht that Sylvia will love and get all your ladies to subscribe and cheer Sylvia on in the comments. Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David, the channel where men who want to do a post-retirement circumnavigation try to convince their beautiful but skeptical wives that this is a fantastic idea. This week's guest yacht is the flagship of a relatively new brand from an old and respected mark that has shaken up the catamaran design with multiple innovations. I'm talking, of course, about the Bally 5.4. Today, we are going to review its specifications, pricing and layout against three similar new vessels, do a full tour asking, what would Sylvia say? Naval gaze at an innovation and or adjustment that might make life aboard just a little easier, have a look at the used market for three to five year old pre-owned comparables, and finally, give it a Dave score and compare the result with all the previous reviewed yachts. All this fun will be sandwiched between a wine pairing from the same region as the guest yacht and a look at a favorite sample of art from the same region. Yachts, waves, ideas, wine and art. What a civilized way to spend 30 minutes. Let's get going. Starting high above Vancouver, Canada, we fly east across North America and across the Atlantic to France's western shores and the home of last time's yacht at the Lagoon Yards in Bordeaux. From here, we fly further east across France to the Mediterranean coast and the yards of Katana and their Bali brand. Finally, we hop just a little inland to the languedoc Roussillon wine region and the vineyards of this week's wine pairing, the Bijou de Sophie Valerous. Le Bijou de Sophie Valerous is named after a lady who worked in the Languedoc vineyards during the late 19th century and became something of a local hero. At the time, it was largely women who worked in the vineyards pruning and harvesting the vines. Sadly, these women were often mistreated, overworked, and underpaid. Sophie fought for women's rights and drastically improved working conditions for her fellow women in the vineyard in which she worked. Bijot is a tribute to her memory, and we share her story on the back of every bottle sold. The rosé is made from grapes sourced from hand-picked bush vines um, alike those that Sophie would have harvested herself many years ago. The grapes are sourced from low-yield old vines on the sloping hillsides of various vineyards in the languedoc roussillon region of southern France. The areas are made up of old volcanic soils composed of 70% schist which helps create high quality grapes with great structure and freshness. The grapes are hand harvested, de-stemmed and gently crushed. Indigenous yeasts are used to ferment the wine for up to 15 to 18 days in temperature controlled stainless vats. Fermentation takes place at a low temperature of 14 to 16 degrees to preserve the delicate flavors. Each grape varietal is harvested and vinified separately and finely blended to create a perfect balanced wine. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's go have a look at that boat. Having a look at the Bally 5.4, where her shorter um, siblings look a tad boxy with this architecture, the shape starts to come into its own at the 54 foot length range, as you can see here. That front um, cockpit is just outstanding. It's like a, a football field of entertainment space and the upper lounge and helm area is outstanding. Uh, it's a proper helm, proper big lounge area. It can be fully enclosed with zippered on uh, enclosures and you've got a lovely hard top there with ladders up so that you can access your lazy bag and sails. Uh, you can see uh, the size of the rear cockpit here with the teak decks. You've also got um, access through uh, outside doors into each aft um, berth, which is really quite nice. And the front bows, very vertical, a little back swept, uh, quite narrow on their entry, 
Um, it, you know, again, in the 54 foot length, it comes into its own and is a pretty good looking yacht. Looking at the new comparables, we're comparing this to the Utremer 55, Lagoon 55, Privilege 580, and Bally 5.4. And I know right away people were go, would be going, the Utremer does not belong in this group. But bear with us here. These are, these are all uh, yachts that, that I would possibly look at for very different reasons. And it will give you some good thoughts on comparative... Uh, sail air over displacement, displace, displacement over length of the waterline figures to see what is a performance yacht, what's a cruising per, uh, a performance cruiser, and what's a cruiser. So uh, leading the pack as far as um, upwind sail area goes is the Privilege 580 with 213 square meters, uh, followed by the Lagoon 55 at 181, the Bali 5.4 at 158, and the Utremer 55 at 152. Heading on to the cabin top, uh, you can see that the um, Bali is quite uh, substantial, let's say, uh, inner width. Uh, the surface area that you've got here, I mean, if you were to measure it in square footage, uh, is pretty darned extraordinary uh, when you consider the size of that upper lounge, the size of that front cockpit and sunning area, and the size uh, of uh, her uh, aft space once the unique garage door is open. Privilege, I mean, the 580 to me is a perfect yacht. I know she's not God's gift to performance, but she's also not a lead sled. And the space and structure and, and rigidity and strength of this yacht just put it head and shoulders above, which it should be given the price delta. Um, the Lagoon 55, it's a really nice yacht. Um, you're not going to go anywhere fast and you're going to have to have quite a wind to get you going. But wow, you want to talk about a floating condo. Uh, the Utremer 55, gosh, I, I love everything Utremer. Uh, and I love this yacht. I love the space. I would never get Sylvia to agree to the owner's berth simply because there's no way to access the top. She feels constrained and, and constricted in a wall-to-wall -wall bed. Uh, so no matter how much I love it, it it's probably never going to happen. As we head then into the saloon, you can see this is where the Bali just goes to a whole new level. Uh, they have done that unique aft garage door, the side windows that open wide open, creating uh, the saloon slash cockpit idea. But, you know, they still have something of a cockpit with that large aft bench seat. Um, and then you have the forward cockpit, you have the massive upward lounge. Uh, I mean, this is just an epic space uh, machine. Uh, the Privilege, obviously, elegantly done. You've got that incredible forward cockpit. You've got the aft cockpit. You've got a, a, a mid-helm with um, the upper lounge. Everything about that design, in my mind, is perfect. Uh, the Lagoon uh, 55, um, really nice uh, um, uh, saloon there. Huge. Uh, in its class, absolutely huge in its class. Uh, it feels like a condominium. Um, as well, it's got uh, that beautiful um, lifting, a dinghy lift, a uh, tender lift there. Uh, and the Utremer 55 completely blew me away when I visited at the boat show and walked into the saloon. The pictures and the videos do not do it justice. It feels huge. It feels so spacious, it feels so elegant, it feels so sophisticated. I can't say enough about the way that Outremer executes their designs. They are flawless. And their numbers, no matter what anybody says out there, you start looking at their uh, SA over D and their D over L and, and, and their, uh, um, their displacements and their upwind sail areas, you really look at them and all the wanking about, uh, you know, ah, it's a, a vinyl ester hull, solid bottom, or a, sorry, a polyester hull, solid bottom. Uh, you know, these guys know what they're doing. Uh, they got a polyester uh, with a vinyl ester coating on a foam core with a solid uh, bottom hull, and they achieve the numbers you need to achieve. They're a beautifully, beautifully done yacht. Okay, enough about that. Let's hop down now into the cabins. Uh, again, the Bali 5.4, massive wide hulls, uh, and you literally 
we have a full-blown king-size walk-around bed in every cabin. Uh, you've got uh, access from the saloon, you've got access out the back directly out onto the cockpit. Um, then you've got, uh, you know, it's, just, it, it, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, the fit and finish, uh, not up to, I would even say, a Lagoon standard, just the, the elegance aspect of it. Uh, certainly not to a Naughty Tech standard, but it, you know, it's not bad. They've done some nice touches. Uh, privilege, extraordinary. Uh, just, just extraordinary. 58 foot yacht, walk around berths. Uh, you, the, the, the master berth is epic. Um, it's the perfect boat, save for the price. Um, and then uh, the, the Lagoon, again, massive. Be they've done such a beautiful job in the owner's suites here. The Outremer, uh, I love everything about the owner's hull, um, except for the fact that it's a wall-to-wall -wall bed and, and I'd live with it, but Sylvia feels like it's crawling into a bed in a tent and she doesn't like it. She doesn't like the way that you can't make the bed and you can't access it, blah, blah, blah. And there's really not even a way that I could work around that with a slide out platform to access the top of the bed because the hulls don't flare that much. So uh, I'll just have to cry quietly into my beer on that one. Moving into the numbers. So um, here we are looking at the top lines. Um, you've got the uh, Lagoon 55 at uh, the most affordable there at a million eighty five, <clears throat> followed closely by the Bali at 1.1 then the Uchimera at 1.3, and then we take the major leap to the privilege at 2.5 euro. Uh, as you know, for sail away, uh, after all the comparisons and, and detailed uh, pricing out that I've done on probably 100 boats or more, uh, I use a, a ratio of 50% add-on for sail away. Uh, and what we're looking at here then is a Lagoon at 2.1, putting it uh, as a new price outside my range. The uh, Bali at 2.2, uh, the Outremer at 2.6, and the Privilege at a nice, cool 5 million simoleons. That's Canadian. Um, as we look on to the rest of the numbers here, length overall, Privilege is longest is 61.1. The um, upwind sail area, uh, Privilege is the highest at uh, 213 square meters. Uh, the displacement, you're looking at um, 27,800 on the Outremer, 13.9 ton. Uh, you're looking at then the big jumps. Uh, actually, the, the, the next one is the Bali at 41.6 or 20.8 ton on a 54-foot yacht. Uh, you know, it, they, I don't know quite how they've done it, but they, they, they build a nice boat with a nice hull and, and they, they've kept their weight reasonable for a production boat. Um, you're looking at the privilege there at a whopping 63.9 or 29 ton and the lagoon at 61,000 pounds or 27 ton. Uh, for engines, uh, the lagoon is the uh, largest standard at 80 horsepower. And then as far as um, fuel and water goes, the leader would be the Bali again at uh, 1,200 liters each. Uh, the next one would probably be the privilege at 1,000 liters each. Uh, the Lagoon has 1,100 liters of fuel and about 1,000 liters of um, water, 960 liters of water. And then the Utremer 55 really keeps it light at 440 liters each. Okay, moving into hull construction. Uh, this gets really kind of interesting. Um, the, the winner I probably put here is the Privilege, E-Glass, Polyester, PVC, Foam Core, Vinyl Ester, Outer Layer. Outer layer. Uh, nothing shocking there, but, but you know, a well-built hull. Um, the Bali's are also very, very good. You got GRP uh, with Glass Reinforced Polyester, Sandwich, PVC, Fiberglass, Polyester, uh, Vacuum and fusing, Fusion. Um, the uh, Outremer, single layer, solid polyester laminate beneath the waterline with a vinyl ester outer layer. Hulls and decks are polyester with uh, Divinicel Div Div foam core and certain components reinforced with carbon. Um, and then the Lagoon 55, uh, they got a balsa core on that hull. I, I, I don't get it, but there you go. 
Um, okay, let's get into the actual performance numbers. So, uh, on the sale area over displacement, obviously the Utremer has it at 28.59. The uh, privilege is next. Again, my comment that it's not a lead sled at 24.49. And then the Bali is next at 22.67. For dis and that's, that's for power. So uh, displacement over length uh, at the waterline or heaviness, um, you've got uh, obviously the Utremer at 75.04, so it's the lightest. Among the other three, the Bali is the leader at 123.69, uh, followed by the Privilege at 127.69, and then Lagoon <laughs> at the heaviest at 175.4. So, a few little surprises there that might make you sit up and take notice. Okay, hopping on board, what would Sylvia say? Well, Sylvia would probably really like this one. Um, you've got a, a beautiful aft um, swim platform there where you can walk all the way around on the outside. It also then hosts the dinghy once uh, it's um, hefted up on the, on the, the lifts there. As I was saying, you've got this massive aft uh, bench seat and then swing around with the garage door open. Look at those beautiful club chairs, uh, the, um, the, the full lounging couch there, nice touches with the lamps. Uh, they've got nice button uh, detail on the couch backs, um, that massive fridge. Look at the size of this galley. Uh, absolutely huge. And then looking back out into your lounge space, uh, your massive fridge, uh, there's areas there for a wine fridge under the semi-forward-facing -for nav station. I think you've got enough space there to put a proper elevating uh, watch chair there. Uh, I certainly would. Uh, the compression post really doesn't get in your way. There's just so much freaking space you hardly notice it. Nice indirect lighting. The pot lights are well recessed. Uh, your washer dryer is uh, at the forefront there uh, on the port side. Okay, let's head downstairs and again the, the, the fit and finish is pretty nice. Um, as we uh, then turn here uh, to the forward VIP cabin. Lots of light, massive space around the bed, easy to make, easy to access, no one's disturbing their partner getting in and out, overhead hatch, lots of ventilation. Uh, you know, you're, look, you're staring straight out those massive windows, they themselves have built-in ventilation. Look at the size of your separate shower here. Very nice uh, electric toilet and then full access into a crew cabin if you want it in the front. And, you know, the crew cabin is no slouch at all. Uh, so, I, I really quite like that. Heading back, note the, the rounded corners. Uh, why aren't you doing this on your Katana brand? Uh, heading uh, forward in this one, I believe this is a four, four or five cabin layout. You've got the twin beds here aft, well, semi-aft, mid midship. Um, very comfortable space. Uh, you know, uh, headboard lights, the whole shebang. Uh, heading up the stairs, they've got a nice trim on the edge there to keep them. Uh, we're going to head across and then down into uh, the um, port side hull. I like the polished steel trim. Uh, looking back into the owner's cabin here, here's your, uh, um, your separate uh, bathroom and shower. Very, very comfortable. Um, the owner uh, side can be turned into a massive suite, but I mean, Look at this. Uh, you've got all the space you want around here. Lovely side tables, huge windows, ventilation in the windows, ventilation above, lots of cupboard space, lots of hanging space. And Bob's your uncle. Look at that beautiful staircase right out onto the aft area. You even have a lovely little working desk here with a little leather inlay. Um, very nicely done. Uh, you've got uh, a, a very nice separate uh, head here. Uh, so you got separate head and shower. So huge, huge space. Needless to say, uh, Sylvia, take one look at this and go, okie dokie, this, this looks like my bedroom. Um, and uh, she has when I've shown her these videos. So uh, if I could afford a 54, it's one of the ballys that I'd probably go for simply because 
the dimensions look right when you get outside the thing and look back. Um, here is your next cabin on this side, fabulous VIP suite, uh, massive uh, bed area, indirect lighting below, padded surround, beautiful um, uh, head, separate shower. Uh, I mean, it's just really, really nicely done. Um, all the fittings feel good. Um, I'm not sure how to quite put it. It, it. it doesn't quite have the feel of the Lagoon, but it, it's very nice. Um, let's move back up then into the galley. To the, to the right or the left here is where in those cupboards you'd have your um, laundry facility. I love these little occasional lamps. Uh, as we look at that fabulous front door out on into the co front cockpit, it is absolutely epic. Uh, huge, beautiful seating. Uh, you can get one of those uh, tent things that, that come down off on your halyards there to cover this whole area up. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, your nice little stair lights there, little touches like that. I mean, it's... It's really nice. You've got the princess seats, all of the um, sun pads. Uh, it's really a nice looking boat. Me, myself, I would put Flexi Teak on all the walking surfaces and I think it'll look great. A little navel gazing now. So this, uh, again, I was talking about these sunshades and no matter what you do, they'd be a pain in the butt to get out. I'm a lazy, lazy man and I don't want to be struggling with these things when I get to shore. Why can't they integrate this sure shade style? It simply uh, integrates right in at the factory if you want it to, or you could aftermarket it, but it'd be awesome if it was integrated at the factory. Uh, it's either power or manual, and it is simply a matter of reaching up, grabbing it, sliding it out, and then when you're ready to take off, reach up, click the latches and slide it back in, or even better, hit a button and in she goes. I mean, look at this. Look at the way they've integrated in the lip. Uh, it looks absolutely fantastic. I love it. And I'm surprised that it isn't used more on boats like the Bali. Okay, back into the uh, amazing front cockpit. Have a quick game of football up there, and down the side decks we go. You'll note there's no hatches, overhead hatches in the side decks on the ballys. They do that from, from a safety perspective and leakage perspective, but they do have a lot of ventilation in the cabins. This upper lounge is, again, it's massive. You not only have a huge, full uh, sit-down lounge, but you have a massive, lovely, protected, uh, sun uh, pad there as well. Uh, then you have the front seats and you have tremendous view of uh, both your uh, port and starboard uh, front. You're going to have to have cameras as you do on the lagoons to see your aft and integrate it into your uh, electronics. Um, but wow, what a comfortable space. Uh, heading back down to the uh, port sugar scoop, uh, look at the expanse of teak you have here. It really is quite something. And we just to the side there, we passed by where the um, uh, actual uh, barbecue is integrated. Little more navel gazing now. This uh, whole idea about docking a boat of this size um, in, a, in a catamaran uh, and thinking you're going to be a real man because you got the separated motors and you don't need any uh, uh, thrusters hogwash. To me, I'd happily spend the 40 grand on a remote controller and the thrusters and save a divorce. Uh, I don't want headphones and screaming at my wife and this and that. I want her sitting up top, sipping a margarita while I quietly bring the boat into the dock all by myself because I'm able to stand where I want. I've got jet thrusters uh, in the uh, uh, bow on a catamaran. I wouldn't need them in the aft because we can coordinate the two separated engines to do the work there. But with the bow thruster and the aft engines coordinated, I can spin it on its axis. I don't have to uh, worry about it. The, the actual jet system goes in very nicely. 
Um, we'll have an image here of a Lagoon 560 with bow and stern jet thrusters, which I think is overkill, but you know, what the heck. Um, they go in very easily uh, and then coordinate the whole thing with a dock mate or a yacht master and uh, yacht controller, sorry. And I am basically standing on the side decks happily and quietly either moving my boat out uh, or spinning it around or moving my boat in. I'm not yelling at anybody. I have total control. I can handle the lines myself as this gentleman's doing here. He just preps his lines. He walks back. He's got full control of the boat. Uh, and he's quietly bringing it into the dock using, in this case, a yacht controller. He's watching, he can walk anywhere he wants. And slowly, slowly brings it in, uh, no panic. Uh, he's got his hand on the, on the thruster, keeping it against the, the dock as he simply brings the boat in. If the nose gets out a little bit, he just brings it in as he holds the line. Okay, looking at the bally from the outside again, when you get into the 50 foot range, 54 foot range, it starts to come into its own. Moving on to pre-owned comparables. So our first pre-owned comparable is going to be a 2019, so a three-year-old boat, Naughty Tech 542. This is one of my absolute favorite boats. The quality, the layout, everything about it, I don't understand why it didn't take off way more than it did. Uh, so we're looking at a three-year-old boat, 1.450 uh, for the three-year-old boat versus 2.215 for the new Bali. Um, sorry, I take the 542. I freaking love this boat. Uh, the next one is a Leopard 58 2019, three-year-old boat, um, massive boat, massive space. Uh, it's, we're looking for 2.1 million versus 2.215 for the new Bali. Um, the athwartship berths in the Bali and all that space, I'd go with the Bali on this one. I know that Sylvia would too. Uh, the next one is a 2017, so we're looking at a five-year-old boat, a Lagoon 560. They're looking for 1.8 versus 2.25. I'd do the new Bali. Um, and finally, let's look at a Bali 5.4, uh, 2021, one-year-old boat. Um, they're looking for 1.890 versus 2.2. I'd go with the used Bali because I probably got more toys on there too. Okay, again, moving into sacrilege territory and comparing um, monohulls. I add 20% to the length to give you the equivalent living space. And the first one we're looking at here is the epic Hansa 675. This thing is a super yacht. It's unbelievable. The... Um, uh, the freeboard on it is staggering. Everything about it, the, the, the power sunroof, the, the, the master cab, I mean, it's just staggering. Um, anyways, this thing is uh, 69 feet long. Uh, they're looking for uh, 1.3, 1.4 for a four-year-old boat versus 2.215. Uh, Again, if I could get Sylvia to agree to the healing, I'd do this Hansa all day long. It's, it is, it's so elegant. It's unbelievable. Um, looking now at a four-year-old CMB 66, another stunning vessel. Uh, they're looking for 1.85 versus 2.215. Again, if the healing wasn't an issue, I'd take this one too. It's a gorgeous vessel. Um, Juno 64, we're looking at a four-year-old Juno 64, 1.145 versus uh, uh, 2.215, half the price in the Juno, if it's the right layout, is absolutely beautiful. I'm afraid in this case, again, if it wasn't for the healing, the monohulls would have it hands down. Nobody kill me on that one. Okay, moving into the Dave score. So what do we have this week? Let's have a quick look. Um, the Bali did extremely well. Uh, you know, again, my application, this is not a lead sled. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're not going to be racing an Outremer. But you saw the numbers, and they're not bad. You saw the construction of the hull. This is Katana. It's not bad. Uh, you, 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 the fit and finish, the, the materials, they're, they're not Naughty Tech level, but the rest of this boat has so many innovations, and the sheer size and the, and the, and the comfort, it's, it's staggering. And I've seen it cross the Atlantic. If you want to look at... Uh, uh, Catamaran Guru, 
Um, they, uh, they did a full crossing in their 5.4, and they've also bought now a Katana uh, 50OC. Um, so uh, they got some tremendous information on their sites. But uh, let's look at this. The interior elegance, give it a 7. Uh, the exterior elegance, give it a six. The upholstery, you know, and such isn't spectacular, it's not bad. Uh, interior comfort, give it an eight. How can you not give it an eight? Exterior comfort, give it an eight. You got so much space, it's so comfortable, it's so unbelievable. Quality, I'm going to give it a seven. It is a quality vessel. Um, performance, I'm going to give it a seven. Uh, you saw the numbers. This is not terrible. Um, lazy Sailor, give it a 7. Everything comes back to the helm. Condo, give it a 9. You, you can't get much more condo than this other than a privileged 580 at twice the price. Geek Score, give it a 6, maybe a 7. Um, and Value for the Money, give it a 6. Um, I might even give it a 7 there. But we're sitting at 71 uh, in around um, the Sea Wind 1370, uh, the Leopard 45, the Aventura 37, Katana OC, Dufour 48. Um, in good company and again, for my application, probably accurately placed overall. For our Art of the Region, we're looking at barges on the Seine. Uh, 1905 to 1906, oil on canvas. Uh, you can see it in the uh, Pushkin Museum in Moscow. Uh, Maurice de uh, Vlaminik was born in Paris. His father was Flemish and taught violin, and his mother came from Lorraine and taught piano. He began painting in his late teens and studied with a painter named Henri Riguelon. Uh, his paint, he painted during the day and earned his livelihood by giving violin lessons and performing with musical bands at night. Uh, Vlaminik participated in the controversial 1905 Salon du Autumn exhibition. After viewing the boldly colored canvases of Vla uh, Vlaminik, Henri Matisse, André de Rain, Albert Marquet, Heinz van Dongen, and Charles Cam Camillon, and uh, Jean P Pugh, the art critic Louis Vaucelles disparagingly disparaged the painters as fauvists or wild beasts, thus giving their movement the name by which it became known, fauvism. After visiting a Van Gogh exhibit, uh, Vlamic declared that he loved Van Gogh that day more than my own father. However, from 1908, his palette grew more monochromatic, and the predominant influence was that of Cezanne. That's our yacht for this week. I hope you've enjoyed her. She is a very big, comfortable, amazing yacht that actually isn't terrible as far as the numbers look. Um, if you've got any comments, love to hear about them. Participate in the Dave Score if you could, and we will see you back here next week. Cheers.